Francis. Okay, you you want to buy? Okay. Eighty-one minutes, an hour and a half, so oh, four no. fifty, five fifty. Okay. What is it? Okay. Uh, I'll get two tickets for the six fifteen. Sam, are you a filmmaker or film student or? Uh, aspiring filmmaker. Aspiring filmmaker. How did you uh, how, how did you find out about this? Uh, just the, in the anthology uh, quarterly magazine, uh, this stood out to me as a retrospective I wanted to, that I felt would be important. Mm -hmm. Had you heard about Ogawa before? No, I, I never had. Um, so it was really fortunate to happen upon it in the magazine because this was a really special uh, document. Uh, my name is Tim White, and I'm one of the projectionists here at Anthology. Were you familiar with uh, Ogawa's work? I wasn't. Yeah. No, and so that means we haven't shown him here at least. And I hadn't heard of him actually, in yeah. retrospective. He's a relatively obscure name in the West. Well, it seems like he's very good at going and finding, let's say, uh, um, marginalized people and telling, telling their story very well. Obviously, he's inter interested in political things and ferment and um, political activism. Even with the farmers, it was more about their politics, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And with a sense of humor, I guess, mm -hmm. too. オーラが飛べんな。国名までやびったりになってよ。で、小屋子のまで、そうだから。まあ、なんていうか。国名やって面白くした方がいいが増えてあげるよ。これがだから男の大根が男の品物になるわけね。そうだよ。だって、これが投
just the how subtly he he's captured really the essence of of, of a people of a struggle of and what about the filmmakers relation to that struggle um i think it's an incredibly important role uh, in that ogawa does the perfect job of removing himself from it while still being able to provide context to the to the outside viewer who knows nothing uh, there's no real way to to understand what exactly the struggle is without his work without the filmmaker's work <laughs> そういう現場に来ることによって、そういう上にね、正しいことをやってきてね。今こういう来てね。我々の言うところ正しくねえようにね、取り上げて、途中をね、え、来られるってこれは全く。あ、何だ。奥さん行くから。え、読んで、僕
we see the same thing over and over again in America too, with like occupying land and then having like uh, military uh, want to remove people who are uh, demonstrating. So you see like this play itself out over and over again, like even today, um, in like a contemporary environment. You know, this is film, 16 millimeter, and yeah. this is like 60 something. Mm. What do you think about it as a young, you know, documentarian? I think it's, you know, technology is it's advancing, but I mean, to me, the more important is like the, the filmmaker's view. It's like, you know, in this film, definitely, the, the film, you can feel the intimacy between the filmmaker and, and the peasants. You know, for example, like the tunnel scene, where they are definitely not allow other people to come in, but the film crew can come in. That shows like how how intimate their relationship is. So I think I think it's it's very crucial for the filmmaker to build this kind of relationship, you know, with the subject and and how you know to have their trust and of course you know be be sincere, you know, be honest with them and be open to the film to the farmers definitely. And I you know because I I read something about this film before, so I I know that Ogawa and and his crew stay with the farmers for for a decade. You know, they, they live there, live with them, and you know, they they buy definitely by the farmer's side. So I think I think that's a very important element. You know, I, I, I and I think of course today, you know, with the technology, you can make like build more beautiful images. But I think that's the you know the attitude, the, the view from the filmmaker is more important. I'm Jeff Rovinelli. I'm a documentary filmmaker living in Brooklyn. Um, I came because my friend here told me about the series, uh, it sounded great um, and it's great to see a radical filmmaker who's working from within the movement and for a young person in New York City it's really exciting to see that kind of uh, commitment. Takasaki経済大学学長により裁判に参加する学生は厳重に処分するという通告が出されていたこの日不当裁判に抗議する高崎経済大学の学生たちは白覆面で顔を隠さなければならない プロレス馬鹿いの白覆面と嘲笑したマスコミはこのデモを組む学生たちの怒りを受け止めるにはあまりにも遠く離れている。学内で依頼を受けた。あるいは写真を撮った。学生大会で発言を行ったという、そんな
uh, visually that was kind of unique, I thought, or stuck out to me. Um, kind of the interaction between the subjects and the filmmaker, I thought, was, was a little bit different, you know, very involved. Kind of like he's part of the, almost like a, he's like a social worker in some ways. A situation like that, if you, you kind of have to get involved, if you don't get involved, then it's just going to be superficial and kind of cruel almost. You're just taking advantage of them for your own purposes, your own for making your own work, so yeah, I think it's fine. It's a documentary, there's no such thing as real documentary anyway. I think it's fiction and always mixed in with documentaries. So. なんて答えるのかっていうのをね、つまり、I think if that collective had ended, it had spent just half of its life working on the political films, um, they would have done their duty <laughs> and they would have given us a great deal in, wor in terms of world cinema, not, not only national Japanese cinema, but the world because, and they have anyway, because their contribution is unique. I never heard of anything like this since um, in any country. And I think that's amazing and powerful. But I think the strength was in the first group of films, not the second, and I think everything deteriorated when they went to the village. <laughs> なるほど老僧の寿命は消えるようにですね。おそらくね、もっとこう、僕が具体的に見てあげられるからそこの周りでも、ポッポッとこう、もうこれはなんか、さっきのこっち来て、8年間の間にもずいぶんね、発送してるんですよね
I spent many summers in the, he's a rice farmer, son. So we spent many summers in uh, his family village in northern Japan. Uh, so this was like reliving it from the 70s for me. Because my first visit, I guess, was 1974 to the village. And uh, it just, just, everything I saw, I saw here. It's extraordinarily compelling. I mean, it's very rich film, uh, history, politics, um, just, uh, you know, it, I don't know, I, it's unique in many respects. And um, it just uh, sort of fits into the, the, I saw some Chinese documentaries recently and it's very clear that, you know, they were very influenced by this film, and by, this, by this director. Mm -hmm. I have right. to run. Thank Thanks. You. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I had seen the, uh, I'd heard about the, the films about the student protests and never seen them. So last night I went and saw the, uh, the film about the, um, the village sort of rebellion and it was interesting in this film to see the sort of historical uh, rebellions of, of the peasant era and everything. And uh, yeah, the films were very interesting. They had a, a whole different time frame to them than a lot of what we're accustomed to seeing and uh, mm -hmm. some really beautiful cycles of growth and rebirth and, and death and, mm -hmm. and that's a, a sort of mystical uh, aspect to them too which I, I enjoyed. I think to, to think of working on projects over 30 or 40 years is uh, really something else you know it's a, yeah so that's definitely inspiring uh, that level of commitment and also I like the collective aspect of the, the filmmaking and um, being able to step in front of the frame and out of it and yeah so, 
Thanks a lot. Thank you.